The topic of lecture six will be taxation. So what we will cover in this lecture is we will talk about what types of taxes there are. And we'll see that there are different taxes on different items um, and what the logic behind those is. We will then talk extensively about the so-called tax incidents. The tax incidents asks who pays for the tax economically versus who writes the check. So who pays, who transfers money into the exchequer's bank account, but who is it actually who bears the economic cost of a tax? And under what, con uh, under what conditions is there actually an economic cost to a tax? And then in the third part of the lecture, we will talk about the designs of tax systems as a means of addressing the problem of inequality or of redistributing income and uh, how tax systems can be used to balance equity and efficiency. And so we will be looking at commodity taxation and income taxation. Now, there are a lot of topics in taxation that we cannot talk about in this course. So if you look at the textbook by Gruber, you will see that there is a couple of chapters on taxation and you could fill an entire course with 24 lectures, tutorials, and so on with this, only this topic. So, you know, we talk about wealth taxes, inheritance taxes, tax competition, um, corporate taxation. These are all topics that would merit uh, lectures of their own. Here we will more or less give an introduction to taxation and quite a lot of the principles that we learn here will also apply to other types of taxes. But obviously other types of taxes have their specificities and um, you know, in, in courses, for example, if you take master's level public economics, you would learn more about, uh, about those, those additional topics. So what type of taxes are there in, in brief? Um, we will distinguish here between five types of taxes. So the first is taxes on earnings. So taxes on earnings is what you typically have for salaried employees. So if you work in a job such as mine, it's not that I get paid my net, my gross pay, and then I have to pay my taxes myself. No, the taxes are taken off by, in my case, HR, but, but by my employer, basically, and directly paid to, uh, to the tax man. Now, taxes on earnings need to be distinguished, although they are very similar, from taxes on individual incomes. So there is an individual income tax that is in its definition broader than the earnings tax on earnings that you typically that your employer pays on your behalf, um, namely if people have other types of incomes. So for example, if you have uh, income from renting out the property or uh, dividend income or um, things like consulting income, self-employment income, that all would go into the, uh, into the income tax. Now in Ireland, for example, the way it works is that you would in your income, you would, if you have any such income, you have to file a tax return and you have to declare how much you earned in your, in your salary job and how much you earned in from other incomes and from the total, uh, the, the, the total tax liability would be calculated. Now there is also another tax on individual incomes that comes from capital gains. So this is not regular income you get from your capital, for example, through, uh, through dividends or through the, the, the payments on, on, on bonds. But what, you would, what would fall under this umbrella would be things like if you sell uh, a house or if you sell, sell stocks with a profit, 
or things like paintings or anything that can be considered an asset. If you sell this for a profit, that profit is counted as a gain and capital gains tax has to be paid on that. How much that is depends on the country. Then there is another important tax uh, in most countries and, and especially so in Ireland, it's the tax on corporate income. Uh, so this is the tax that corporations have to pay. In most countries, it's based on their profits. And so many, many uh, companies employ a large number of tax accountants and tax consultants to, in, in order to try and reduce the amount of profits they're making, even though they, they make them, but they, they at least have them you know, the, the net profits they have on their books, they try to minimize in order to minimize their tax burden. And this is obviously also why uh, Ireland's policy is seen quite controversial in the European context, because Ireland has very, very low corporate income taxes, which on the one hand in encourages firms to locate in Ireland, but it is obviously questionable from both a, a competition perspective where the European Union countries should try and undercut one another. Um, and also it is sometimes questionable whether firms who locate to Ireland because of the taxes, whether they actually create any benefit for the, for the greater economy. It's, these are questions. I'm not, I'm not uh, making a value judgment here. This is just, um, it, it very much relates to, to this debate. Then you have taxes on wealth. Taxes on wealth are paid by individuals or groups of individuals. And there are three types of taxes that, that you typically encounter. One are wealth taxes that only some countries actually have. So there are some countries that have taxes that you pay on the value of your assets. It's actually getting debated a lot in places, even in the US um, during the, the 2020 uh, race for the, um, the presidential elections during the caucuses. For example, there was Bernie Sanders, who was very much advocating a wealth tax in the US. And you hear this also sometimes in uh, in Germany, France, uh, you, you hear especially the political left um, asking for that. So, so the idea here is we take a person's wealth and uh, charge them as a tax a certain percentage of their total wealth. The reason why this is controversial at times uh, politically and, and also socially is on the one hand, uh, it, it, it is perceived obviously as a good idea to, to redistribute money from the people who have a lot of wealth to those who don't. Um, but it's also controversial because if the wealth is the result of earnings and those earnings have already been taxed before, then, then people who have accumulated a lot of wealth get taxed twice and have not as much of an incentive to to work as hard, and so so th these are the typical trade offs that that we that uh, you can hear in the public debate, and that also economists are are uh, talking about. Then we have property taxes. That is something that to to people in Ireland uh, is is nothing nothing new. If you buy a house um, or if you own a property, you have to pay a property tax every year, depending on the value of the real estate, so the land and any structures built on it. Also, in this, uh, in this field of wealth taxes, we have estate taxes. So these, these are called estate taxes or inheritance taxes. And they are based on the estate that the person who died left behind. Basically, from the, the estate has to pay taxes on whatever the value of the estate is. The reason for that, that's also a quite a controversial tax or, or it's sometimes a, a tax that, well, I wouldn't say controversial, actually. 
most economists would say an estate tax is is absolutely necessary if we don't want inequality to perpetuate um, itself infinitely, uh, indefinitely. Um, so that the argument, the arguments you will find pro and con here is on the one hand, you know, we have worked for this wealth and so we want the right to pass this on to our children. Um, the problem is then obviously that if you have multiple generations who do that, then you have some families who become incredibly rich and others, others who don't. And those who are rich in the third or fourth generation may not be rich because they themselves have worked so hard, but because they have accumulated so much wealth. And to what extent the society is willing to tolerate this inequality in wealth due, due, due to inheritances, that then governs how big those estate taxes typically are. In, and, and so you see pretty high estate taxes in many European countries. You don't see high estate taxes in the likes of the United States. Um, so one argument for estate taxes is, once again, th that you don't want uh, inequality to, to perpetuate itself over uh, many, uh, over, over a few generations. Another is that uh, income from inheritance, why should that be tax-free if income from labor is not tax-free? Um, so the way most countries solve this is that families can pass on a certain amount tax-free, so like a house or a small business, they can pass this on tax-free to their children, but on every, anything beyond that, they have to pay inheritance tax or estate tax. And then another tax that uh, all of you and everyone uh, in, in this country and pretty much in the world uh, ha is in touch with almost on a daily basis um, is consumption taxes. So here we have two taxes that, uh, that we should distinguish between. So one, on the one hand, we have sales taxes, uh, typically VAT, so value added tax, that is paid by the final consumer to the vendor. And then the vendor transfers that to the, to the taxman, to the exchequer. Um, typically, sales taxes are characterized by uh, one or two or in some countries, three different rates for different types of products, but are just used across the board. Whereas then we have excise taxes, which are also a consumption tax and which are not so different from a, a, a sales tax, but they're typically levied to discourage the use of these, these goods. So they're either levied on goods that have a, an externality, for example, on the healthcare system, that would be cigarettes, that would be alcohol, or a negative externality on, uh, on the environment, uh, such as gasoline would have. So excise taxes can be used as pigou taxes. They don't have to be pigou taxes in the, in the sense that we, that we encountered in lecture four but uh, they are typically used um, with goods that, that have a negative externality in one way or another. So there are lots of different types of taxes. We will talk in this course later about consumption taxes and income taxes and look at the economic principles and, that lie behind them.